you know where to start with Brian. He's been a debating champ. He won the debate world debating school championships in 2018 uh, when he was coaching Team China. He's a master in philosophy from Oxford University. He writes for the Time magazine. Uh, I mean, it just sounds amazing. And Brian, do you have anything to say? Like, how did you actually get there? Well, firstly, I'll just clarify, I didn't win it. The team that I coached won, so I don't yeah. want to call myself a winner. Uh, but I, I did make the semis at the World Universities Championships in 2020. Um, how did I get there? I would broadly say, I think, three things, really. And the first is I'm an incredibly, uh, you could you could almost call it reckless, but I, I would prefer to call it a euphemistically adventurous individual. I enjoy taking risks. I enjoy the feeling of losing although not for long. And above all, I think from my point of view, there are bound to be moments and times in life when you have to give, you have to let go of something in order to gain something more, not just gain it back, but gain something more and beyond that. So then the first lesson that I would share is just don't just take risks, embrace risk and loss that comes with it. I applied for the Rhodes Scholarship in 2017. I didn't get it. I came back two years later and reapplied for it. When I was in high school, I, there was uh, thrice I made the national squad in debating. I never made once the national team of Hong Kong, but I never gave up. So I stuck to it. I persisted. You know, nevertheless, I persisted. So I think the important thing to know is be willing to admit impediments, to admit to inadequacies, because only by embracing them could you overcome them in the long run. The second thing I would note is uh, listen to others' advice, but more importantly, listen with compassion. There are folks in life whose words might be grating your ears. There are folks whose advice may not be pleasing to hear. There might even be folks that you feel are out there to get you, but at the end of the day, care for you and care for your well-being and your betterment. Don't reject them. Don't shut them off because they don't say things that completely vibe with you. You don't want obsequious sycophants to the only voices that you hear, because that way you'd condemn yourself to not only a path of closed-mindedness, but also... You know, you would de facto eschew any and all debate. And how could you do that if you're a debate? If you want to be a good public speaker, an open-minded critical thinker, you can't eschew dissent. You can't treat those who disagree with you as mortal enemies. You should treat them instead as valuable assets, mentors, and those who can offer you counsel at times of crises are the people that you truly need in your life. So this is a more personal note and less technical. The final note is more technical on public speaking and debating. Practice. I wouldn't call myself a naturally gifted public speaker. I wouldn't even call myself a naturally gifted extrovert. I, I, I would say I'm an introvert. I'm someone who's incredibly shy and generally loath to make friends at large, as you can see. But, but, and the important thing is the but here, I undertook active efforts to reach out, to make, to bridge differences, to practice the way I spoke, to practice speaking in different contexts, until it got to a point where I felt truly comfortable and at ease with the way I spoke, with the stuff I said, and that to me is most important. So practice makes difference. It's not about how many hours you pour into it. It's about how critically minded and goal oriented you practice. And that's, that means giving practice speeches, delivering you know, mock cases, outlining your thoughts, asking questions. Don't be afraid of trying because what's the downside to trying? You're in a space, you're at an age where trying is uniquely permitted and uniquely permissible. You've got the privilege to try. You might not have privileges in terms of wealth, in terms of income, I don't know, or status, whatever. But you can try because you're young. And that, I think, is an incredibly important and valuable asset you must, we must indeed cherish. So these are three things I would say. Sorry for being so uh, sesquipedalian. 